Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, allow me to first extend happy belated Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. There are many who would have spent that evening, morning, afternoon with their mother. Unfortunately, Madam Speaker, I don't have that privilege. And therefore, as is usual, I would have spent most of Mother's Day, me and one of my grandsons, visiting my mother and my sister, who are both in the Catholic graveyard. And Madam Speaker, this is a ritual to me, because those two women had the greatest impact on my life. And I can say without reservation or fear that they were the two women whom I loved most in this world. Madam Speaker, we had a, Kalani had a very great, successful town meeting on inflation. And um, I'd like to thank those who came out. As a matter of fact, the town meeting was so great that they've asked for a repeat. And we would have a repeat uh, at some particular point in time. A specialist from Central Bank came and spoke about inflation. And we look forward to the town meeting that um, the Ministry of Works um, has offered to extend to us. Uh, we'd be talking about traffic flow and what can possibly be done to alleviate traffic that may be a problem as um, time progresses. And I want to thank the minister um, for that. I also want to thank the minister, Madam Speaker, who has responded to us um, quite swiftly any time we um, point out the various potholes. And we find it very convenient, and I think it's something that other um, constituencies should do we would only do GPS mapping, and we send the GPS location to the ministry, which makes it very easy for them. And within um, rapid time, they are there to repair such facilities. And I think if we're on Bahamas, on Bahamas we must um, assist so that the entire Bahamas move forward. I tell you, it's not a, it's not a difficult day to day. And um, I want to thank the minister also for the speed bumps that he had put in tropical gardens. We were plagued with motorbikes, we were plagued with heavy traffic, vehicular traffic, noise, pollution, etc. And I can say with confidence that that has decreased since, since the ministry had placed uh, speed bumps in our thoroughfare. That had decreased by as much as 70, 80 percent. But Madam Speaker, as I rise today on behalf of the great people of Kalani, I must voice strong objection to how the PLP is running the agenda of this House. We were scheduled today to debate the Ombudsman Bill, and about 24 hours before we were to debate, the governing side informed the opposition that there would be other legislation debated instead of what was scheduled. The Ombudsman's bill was being pulled, according to the government, for more consultation. This means that the PLP was yet again rushing another bill without proper consultation. They did it the same time, the sa they did the same thing some weeks ago when they pulled the Tourism Development Corporation at the last minute for more consultation. Madam Speaker, I take my responsibilities as a member of this House on behalf of the people of Kalani very, very seriously. I prepare in order to present a considered view on the matter before us. Members cannot have a proper view of this new amendment to the regulations of the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museum legislation due to the short notice of this debate. The work of the Parliament, Madam Speaker, is serious. Parliament has the power to pass laws. 
I got on Tim. But I'm you not. recognize this honorable member for West Grand Bahama. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, we did inform the uh, side opposite that there was a change of what we had scheduled for today. But that's predicated upon the fact that we've had groups asking us for further discussion. Uh, we wanted to be respectful to and to allow for simply because it is an issue that we are all gathering more information. Insofar as what we're debating today, the truth is, and I was told by the former uh, Prime Minister Hubert Ingram when he sat on this side, that legislation or proposed uh, bills that are on the agenda are on the agenda for you to prepare, for you to know what it is, and the government does not really have to tell you what's coming up, but you should always be ready. So for you to say you don't have means that you were not prepared, not that you're waiting to get prepared. You're supposed to always be prepared. Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would pose this question. I speak now to the Bahamian populace. I speak to the Bahamian populace. Is it fair for the government to have 15 legislation on the agenda and they are demanding or requiring the, the opposition to have 15 prepared yes. when they can select one at any time, so they only have to prepare yes. one. Yes. They prepare one and say that's what they're doing. I pose that to the Bahamian people. Now, Madam Speaker, Parliament has the power to pass laws that have long standing and serious implications for the Bahamian people and our country. Parliament has the power, Madam Speaker, to pass sweeping tax, taxation laws that could change the lives of the people. And the people elected a governing side to carry out an agenda, carry out the agenda it proposed during the last general election campaign. They expect the governing party to be serious and sober in its administration of the affairs of Parliament and the government. The New Day administration appears disorganized and not serious when it comes to Parliament. Repeatedly, bills are suggested for debate at the last minute. Repeatedly, Madam Speaker, there are changes to our agenda at the last minute. This is due in no small part because the New Day side has the leader who prefers traveling than governing. Mm. The chair recognizes West Grand Bahama. Before Kalani gets to his usual theme that is really, <laughs> really, really all worn out and overused, an overused theme, the truth is, Madam Speaker, uh, the government side is very organized. Legislation is sitting on the agenda, legislation we intend to debate and we provide the advance notice so that members can get prepared. That's the way I was trained, that you are supposed to know the issues that are on the agenda. And if it's 15, 15 or 16 or 17, one. you are supposed to be always ready to debate. I posed that question already to the Bahamian populace. They will answer that. They will answer that. Madam Speaker, I know I would allow you to divert me today. But, yeah. Madam Speaker, on Friday of last week, we were informed about the Ombudsman Bill that we'd be debating. I prepared, did my research, etc. I had other people doing research for me. I spent the entire weekend preparing, sacrificed okay. events, etc. <laughs> and then, and then, having gotten all my research data, I decided that. I would now compile everything that Monday night. At 1.30 a.m., while preparing, I looked at my WhatsApp to see whether there were any urgent message. And there I saw, because I went to bed, I went to bed at 8.30 that evening, knowing that I would get up at 1 a.m. to complete my budget, my debate. But I have a lot more to say during the budget to prepare my debate. I then looked and discovered at 1.30 a.m. 
That the agenda changed. That we're going to do what we're supposed to be doing today. Madam Speaker, at 1.30 a.m., after I've done slaved, labored <laughs> research, getting prepared. But Madam Speaker, the Prime Minister prefers traveling constantly in great luxury rather than organizing the business of governing. He often does not know what is going on in his government, including the Ministry of Finance. In London recently, again embarrassed the country when he obviously did not understand the facts about funds the government is proposing to borrow to build new airports. He did not simply misspeak. He simply got his facts terribly wrong. He did not understand what he was being told. Let us not forget, Madam Speaker, that the Minister of Finance did not know what the correct deficit numbers were a few weeks ago. And sadly, it seems like someone else is the de facto Minister of Finance who is really in charge and who makes the decisions and tells the Minister of Finance, PM, what to do. When the Prime Minister is not busy getting facts wrong, he and the Deputy Prime Minister are busy contradicting each other on various announcements. I can pull the facts. The Cabinet is in chaos. I can pull the facts. There is chaos in Parliament, as demonstrated today. <laughs> the Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for West Bramham in Bimini. You know, the, uh, the, 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 the Member for Kalani it makes it laughable, Madam Speaker, because it is laughable, Madam Speaker, because the member is talking about not being prepared for this to be. He could not prepare the facts. But we heard from Carmichael earlier that we are here pretty much because of an agreement you made. You made this agreement. You caused for the individual to be able to go and search for and come up with. It was your arrangement. So you don't really have to do much preparing because you should be speaking to it because you know it. And insofar as calamity or chaos, never further from the truth. We are an organized body, we're a team, and we are collectively working for the best governance of this country. Best, best Grand Bahama, I like you. You are good at twisting, <laughs> twisting words and information. You deserve an Academy Award. <laughs> Madam Speaker, and there are many serious, there are many stories of chaos at the office of the Prime Minister, with consultants all over the place, large and in charge, while the Prime Minister jets around the world in first class, with big delegations spending millions. He seems unconcerned about the details of government, except making announcement about things that will never happen. Madam Speaker, the PLP has no serious parliamentary agenda, which the country saw from day to day. They simply grab bills that are in the bureaucratic drafting stream and bring them here. There's no clear plan, strategy, or vision. He liked to talk about plans when in opposition. In government, the main plan he has is where he, like, where he will take his next trip overseas. Has he left yet? He's still here or he left? This September, <laughs> the PLP will be in office for two years. In government and in parliament, they are disorganized, they are chaotic, they are dysfunctional, and they are inefficient, and they are last minute. It is profoundly unfair to their members and to the opposition when they give notice that they will debate a certain piece of legislation, pull it at the last minute, and then propose to debate other legislation. This shows a disrespect for the House of Assembly and its members. It is a disregard for how our democracy should work. And I plead with the leader of government business to work with his colleagues to fix this process, which is clearly broken and terribly disorganized. Give us more warning. 
<laughs> the chair recognizes the honorable member for West Brom. Madam Speaker, to, to Kalani, uh, Madam Speaker, we uh, from time to time will find ourselves having to withdraw or to hold or to ask the opposition for assistance and to work with us. And we do that, Madam Speaker. And uh, Madam Speaker, it's all about how do we ensure that when we come to the parliament, we are debating what we must. But the member for Kalani, I find it to be so amazing. When he was government, do you know how many bills he left on the table? How many bills you left on the table that you did not pass? That you did not check, check on the agenda? Do you realize that, Madam Speaker? And Madam Speaker, when the member for Kalani talks about being prepared, but he says the same thing every week and every time he comes here. So you're not aware of preparation. You have some favorite words. And you can use those favorite words in every speech you give. So it doesn't matter, Madam Speaker. One of my favorite words moving forward, Rastan, is that I like you. <laughs> I didn't say love, I said I like you. <laughs> Very careful with how I use it. I versus O. <laughs> Madam Speaker, <laughs> in looking at these, Madam Speaker, in looking at these amendments to the regulations of the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museum legislation, these amendments in part pertain to exploration of shipwrecks and related licensing. There's great controversy in our country regarding this issue. Has there been full and proper consultation regarding these amendments? Do all stakeholders and the public know the full ramification of these amendments? Let's see why I ask these. Do all the members of the PLP know the full ramifications of these amendments. As I noted previously, just the other day, the Tourism Development Corporation bill was scheduled to debate in this same place. It had to be pulled because stakeholders had concerns. There was not enough consultation. And some stakeholders were not even familiar with the bill and its consequences for their part of the industry, including serious financial consequences. This is not how governance should be done. Members of the governing side are likely annoyed and frustrated that this is how their leader is managed, mismanaging the affairs of government. Madam Speaker, the governing side is not as serious as it should be when it comes to debating serious pieces of legislation, such as antiquities, monuments, and museum legislation before us. One of the only things they appear serious about is getting more and more of the people's money via taxation and aggressive tax collection. This debate comes at a time when the newspapers are filled with stories about the actions of the New Day administration's tax collectors. An ad was recently circulated by the Department of Inland Revenue detailing its powers of sale under the Real Property Tax Act. Another ad from the Department of Inland Revenue warned of the department's other powers. It said to recover VAT, business license taxes, or real property tax, the department may, quote, garnish amounts due to a taxpayer from a third party. For example, an employer, tenant, customer, or bank, or garnish a third party who has authority from some other persons to pay money to the taxpayer, for example, an agent. Madam Speaker, this New Day administration is causing fear and extreme anxiety across this, across this country. Bahamians do not know whose things they are coming to seize next. If they come after you, you could end up broke or destroyed. A story in Tribune on Monday, May 15th, 2023, set out what this hostile New Day administration is doing. The headline of the story was, Crackdown on Tax Cheats, Most Coordinated Ever. They are using the full powers of the state to go after Bohemians and bohemian businesses. The story said, quote, Simon Wilson, the Ministry of Finance's financial secretary, speaking after the authorities last week, 
warned they will exercise the power of sale against extreme real property tax delinquents, said the government has hit an iceberg when it comes to enforcement and cannot and will not ignore blatant failures by taxpayers to meet their obligations, end quote. The PLP and the Minister of Finance is going after the very people who voted for them. All reasonable people think taxes should be paid, but tax collection should be done with fairness, due process, and decency. And when the money is collected, it should be used for the benefit of the people. The New Day administration is obsessed with getting all the money they could get. They have to find a way to pay for these travel and good times reserved for selected few. They have to find money to pay for all PLP consultants. And sadly, this administration has unleashed the tax collectors in an unprecedented way against Bahamians. Many people and businesses are just trying to get back on track after difficulties of the pandemic. Right at the moment when money starts to come in, the New Day tax collectors are threatening, let me repeat this, important, right at the moment when money just starts to come in, the New Day tax collectors are threatening to seize and sell properties on the garnish accounts. There is no mercy for the people by the Ministry of Finance. The Minister of Finance only wants more and more and more and lots more. Bahamians are suffering under a PLP obsessed with getting the people's money. As the Prime Minister, who is Minister of Finance, flies around the world in luxuries, tax collectors are wrecking havoc in our lovely Bahamas. These hostile and overly aggressive actions by the New Day tax collectors are cruel and excessive. Give me, give me that file, the blue one, the blue, the, blue, the blue one in there. The PLP is hurting bohemian businesses and business people through its heartless tax collection, it's got everything, and tax crusade. Parliament's agenda, Madam Speaker, should not be administered in a chaotic manner. If the PLP cannot even organize a proper parliamentary agenda, this is another symptom of just how disorganized and dysfunctional this New Day government and Prime Minister truly are. Madam Speaker, I would pose one question before I leave. It's a series of financial statements here. The gaming board building, Goodman's Bay. I understand that you're in negotiations to sell that building to somebody. Would you inform this nation and this parliament if that is true and whom you are in negotiation to sell that building to? I have all the papers here. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Member. The Chair recognizes the Honorable Member for West Bahama. Madam Speaker.